we're live. Heath, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. My Stuart. first guest on the podcast. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. How Hot have off you the been? back of a book launch, yeah. man. You're the man at the moment. You're the oh. number one. So, yeah, um, thank you for, for asking. Yeah. How have you been? I've been great, man. Um, I try and make a habit of always feeling good, you yeah. know. <laughs> but no, life's good. I, I um, Everything's going well in my world. I'm pretty happy. Would you say it's the busiest you've been with Jesse and newborn? Business? Yeah, 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 yeah. If you can call it busy, busy seems the wrong word with yeah. a, with a newborn. Yeah, you know, busy and bliss. I don't know. You know, it's it's extending me. It's making me be better. You know, you know, it's like you know, yeah. kids are the the greatest spiritual practice you could take on. You know, and yeah. um, man, the payback is amazing. You yeah. know, when you're in the right place and space too. You know, mm-hmm. I'm. I'm uh, two times around with, with kids now, but this time I'm just in the right space, Amazing. beautiful relationship, everything. And so, so just seeing that life unfurl, playing a part in it, man, yeah. what can you say? Yeah, then life has never been better. I've never seen you and Emma so blissful. So happy. Yeah. I'm very happy. Really beautiful. Yeah, and everything else pales out, man. Like it's, it's focus, isn't it? Like health, everything is identity. What are you identifying mm-hmm. with? And you can choose anything. Yeah. And the, 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 the best thing at the moment is it, we have an obvious place to identify with with our newborn son and it's just great so all the other stresses of running business of it they're just they're just fading fading into the background you know keep us honest keep yeah. us honest keep us working hard mm. keeping a practice up but um they're not hitting the center stage like they used to you know so it's a beautiful thing families what can you say you know what do we got but family connection people you know find your tribe man that's that's my motto nowadays you know yeah. if you want to heal it takes a it takes a group. You can't do it solo. You know yeah. uh, the immediate family, number one investment. You know, but um, yeah, life is bliss, and here I find myself in the studio. Podcast is number zero zero one. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect match. Uh, I'm happy. Yeah, can be happier. Beautiful. And what's going on with your practice? Are you are you doing your martial arts, and are you keeping that going? Yeah, yeah. Um, my practice at the moment is jujitsu. You know, it's yeah. a discipline. It's body awareness. It keeps me super fit. Yeah. Gets me out of my head faster than anything else. Um, but more importantly, it's what I love at the moment. You know, it's 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 it occupies my interest as a as a pursuit. So physically, yeah, um, needs to be balanced with more yoga. I'll give mm. you. I'll definitely say that. I think I think yoga balances anything. Mm. Um, so I'd like to add. Um, more yoga to that, but yeah, jujitsu is my thing. I love it, um, and and any, any pursuit which is extremely complex that you get very small um, progressive wins from for years of investment. I think that's the best thing because the return is going to be amazing. And that's the best thing about getting older. Once you've been studying or practicing something for 10 plus years, that's when the juice comes out, right. man. You know, and that's why I, I think the best thing we can do when we're younger is choose one of the classic arts and just get into it mm-hmm. and don't stop because it, it, I think generally it's a 10 year process before you start to taste it properly. Right. You know, and then you're addicted. Yeah. You good know. point. And I mean, in this day and age where so many uh, disciplines are so accessible, it's kind of like a blessing and a curse because there's so much to choose from. Uh, I think quite often people don't get to that 10-year mark of going really deep into a discipline. So it's quite an interesting point. Um, I think commonly people pull away from the discipline as soon as you're getting into the the, the juice of it because at first it's kind of challenging to to get into the into the initial processes of it and then the true depths of it get revealed but with all the available teachings i think it can be a bit confusing for people these days beautiful but also a bit distracting and confusing yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's it, it takes a long time to learn the language you know everything's I, got a basic language and that's the tedious part mm-hmm. learning the language learning the basic elements to put together so you can get sentences and then you can get songs and then you can get the mm. art at the end of it. 
But that's the way it is, man. We wouldn't want you know it. You've been doing it a long time. You wouldn't want it any other way when you get to the ten plus year point. You know, yeah. I mean, you know it's a, it, and you know you get to that point and you just stop talking as much. You know, you just you can tell the people that have been right. playing for a long time. They just they don't spruik it. They don't need to. Mm-hmm. But having said that, every part of a, a system requires you to eventually teach as well. So, yeah. but I think people are jumping the first steps. They want to become teachers right. and notable personalities in their field straight away, and that's cool. That's admirable. But um, got to do the work because nowadays everyone's um, jumping online and becoming an authority. And in the health game, I. I don't want to see people claim to be all authorities under 10 years of practice. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, in the martial arts scene, jiu-jitsu in particular, uh, do you see that as much? Not really, especially um, in Australia, in WA, jiu-jitsu is really new, man. Mm-hmm. Like uh, I'm lucky enough to be at the, uh, the, the, the biggest and best school. It's a Gracie school and things like that. We've got an amazing teacher, direct lineage back to the family, mm-hmm. things like this. But um, we're all blue belts, man. There's a couple purple belts, and but we're, we're all young at it. Mm-hmm. And I think any discipline like that, man, it, it, it's, it's a humbling form. You know, I, I haven't seen anyone. There's no one in our school. That's got an attitude problem, right? <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean. Just, Constantly humble. Ah, that's and that, that's an aspect of that's credit to the teacher too. You know, he filters things like this. But mm-hmm. um, you know, if you're learning correctly, you know, the humility is one of the first things that flowers. Right. You know, very early on, if you're getting taught properly, mm-hmm. I think. So, but yeah, the, I don't know much of the other martial arts scene, but with with jujitsu, it's strong and healthy. People are getting into it because mm. it's a uh, it's an intellectual art. It's it's not it's 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 not like a what's well, a fighting form, mm-hmm. but it's it's yeah, you got to think and you got to stay relaxed. And that's what's it's a parallel with yoga and things like that. You find yourself in a twisted up position. You just got to surrender to mm-hmm. it, relax, and find balance and comfort and. It's an amazing thing. Yeah. You know, I think they go hand in hand. I really do think um, that something like jiu-jitsu with yoga is the perfect balance. Mm-hmm. But well, apparently a lot of these martial arts, actually, the origins of them are in northern India and then gradually it went into other, other parts of Asia. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the parallels are undeniable yeah. for sure. Especially something like BJJ. It's like, man, the longer you do it, the shorter you get because you're getting compressed. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? As opposed to yoga, the longer you uh, do it, the you know, you stay elongated, mm-hmm. you know, you keep. So, I mean, for that level alone, I think. Yeah. Balance and how about the game of nutrition? I mean, you've yes. been in that. How long have you been? Twenty plus years. Yeah, so you would have seen all the passing fads. Seen and the fads come and go twice. Yeah, so um, um, but seen everyone's hanging their fad on some truth. There's, there's not. Yeah. I haven't seen one trend or fad come that hasn't been hanging it on uh, an element of truth. You know, but that's that's the, that's the thing about holistic sciences that it's there's many aspects to it and you've got to keep it holistic there's it's always there's a lot to it and it's changing so um yeah seen a lot come and go but the the core principle is just not overeating eating nutrient Mm -hmm. density knowing your body knowing yourself tailoring the diet and lifestyle to you you know and um and running it that way but Mm -hmm. it's uh, I eat a plant-based diet. I, I don't think everyone should be eating a hundred percent plant-based diet. Right. You know, I, you know, what is the healthiest diet? It's the question's broken, you know, and I've been saying that for a long time. <laughs> it's the, it's the wrong question. Yeah. You know, what's the healthiest diet? It's like, you might as well be asking what's the best color. You know, it just doesn't work like that. Mm-hmm. Um, a different question is, how can we be a noble race? How, how can we how can we eat and and be on this planet without destroying it and with without disrespecting it? That's a different question. And um, and does that mean you have to abstain from all meat and everything else? I, I don't think so. Mm-hmm. I think the, I think the question is a lot more complicated than that. And um, uh, in my pursuit of the sciences and everything else, I've never seen such a simplified answer you know, work in a complex situation. So mm-hmm. um, the nuances start to come in. And I think we've got to be conscious of where we're sourcing our food from nowadays more than ever because we're an overpopulated planet. But that's the beauty of it, man. That, that's when we get to reinvent systems and and do it afresh. 
but um, I'm more interested in people just getting nutrient density and discovering that they can eat a hell of a lot less. Mm. You know, we don't. People are eating all the time, all the time, because they're they're eating nutrient deficient food and always hungry and you, mm. you can't be like that when the whole idea of eating is to, to sustain the body so the chi can circulate so your shen and spirit can illuminate and and then reassess mm. you know and people just aren't doing that so we're always hungry and i think the reason we're always hungry is because we're empty inside from a lifestyle that's not nourishing us right. so we confuse food with emptiness and of course, then food becomes a drug. Mm-hmm. And um, welcome to the Western culture, man. You will never be short of finding a new drug food, you know. Yeah. So, like this, like this matcha tea. Look at this. Look at this. I mean, this this is nourishment and food, mm-hmm. visually, aesthetically, taste, quality, the, mm-hmm. the story behind it, everything, man. So, this fills me up on multiple levels. You know, drinking with friends. There's so much more to it than just what's the nutrient profile and what's the RX score. You know, come on, man. Like that. That's that's old now. So, yeah, that's very refreshing to hear. Mm. Uh, On a on a very physical level, what do you think of uh, the food being depleted in terms of like the topsoil getting uh, just mass production of natural foods, but the topsoil is just depleted. So do you think we can actually get all of the vitamins, minerals, nutrients just from food alone? I'd like to get your opinion on that. Um, I, I used to think we could. Mm-hmm. Now I don't. Yeah. Um, and it's just an opinion because what I'll say to that is that there's no science, man. Mm-hmm. Everyone's going to have an opinion. I'm yeah. going to ask, okay, can we? where's that opinion growing from? Where, where's your data? What, how have you come to that mm-hmm. opinion? doesn't mean you have to have research or studies, but I, I want to hear that part of the conversation. Mm-hmm. And when I always ask that, people are just uh, kind of regurgitating some other someone else's opinion. Right. And that's fine. Yeah. But um, let's not pretend that we know because this is this is the way it's I've seen it working for twenty plus years is that this sort of stuff comes out ten years down the track, fifteen years down, and and I can't see how we are. We all know the farming methods we're doing now and it is completely um, stripping the soil of micronutrients, mm-hmm. not macro, but micro, and micronutrients control macronutrients, mm-hmm. how they're assimilated into the body. Micronutrients control all the hormone pathways, all the enzyme pathways. So the information, the punctuation of, of these words and sentences we're talking about before mm-hmm. is coming from micronutrients. And so how do we know that if that uh, those seeds you're eating are zinc deficient and this or that or, or suboptimal at mm-hmm. least? So I, I think from what I've seen, you have to assume that um, micronutrients are low. And so you have to now buffer them uh, or get them in from other sources. Mm-hmm. Me, I, my, my main one of filling all the gaps is, is AFA. You know, I like the, the blue green algae, mm-hmm. you know, E3 live. I like that because that's, that's um, a thing for me is I'm not big on supplementation, but I like wildcrafted. Mm-hmm. I like if I'm going to supplement, my number one choice is, is it wildcrafted? I mean, is it, is it being sourced from where it's been growing for hundreds, if not thousands mm-hmm. of years, you know? And um, the AFA comes from Mount Klamath, the lake there. It's surrounded, they call it the Ring of Fire, it's surrounded by volcanic sort of, uh, environment. Mm. What does that mean? It, uh, it means that the, the the mineral deposit in that lake is off the charts. Yeah. So minerals, it's jacked. Anything in the water in the ocean is going to be superior mm. nutrient wise and grown on the land. It's just the way it is. So mm. anything out of the ocean is going to be great. Out of major lakes like this, is going to be great. And then on top of that, I want to know more about the altitude is very high mm. and so now we've got a blue green algae which specializes in capturing photonic light right but at altitude which means it's getting the right spectrum of emf mm. which is important too so I, I i really um rate that one for me but a caveat always in everything i teach and do is like you got to work it out for yourself because you have an enteric nervous system so you can tell you know be be conscious when you eat how does this feel do i get bloating do i get dis- Right. Dishes and my energy dipping, and you got to do that for weeks. Yeah, and then it's like, nah, this one's working for me. Great. Um, things like the, the the mushrooms, you know, massive on the on the um, 
the the uh, the Chaga and the Uchi Wu and mm-hmm. uh, Reishi, all these things, I, I think is essential That's because cool. we're we're a privileged culture nowadays, mm-hmm. and we we can access these things from all around the world just by ordering it online. Yeah, so very I, I think we need to do that. Mm-hmm. I do. I think because it, a, a, a micronutrient deficiency will take five to ten years before you get, you know, on average. Is that right? Yeah, it's, mm-hmm. it's not a fast thing. Mm-hmm. You know, you'll get signs and symptoms early, but that might be just being a little off center mm-hmm. emotionally, a little bit tired, not sleeping as well. That are, these things build up, start spruiking new branches and leaves of signs and symptoms that you're not connecting back to the core nutrient deficiency. Either, even like cardiovascular disease down the track and things like that can be just simple nutrient deficiencies that have gone 10 years. Mm. So, How about people? I know people that have put on that much weight, have been that unhealthy for so long. Even a slice of lettuce in their burger, they will purposefully take it out because they feel that that bit of greens is irritating their gut. Well, how do you start shifting someone that that deep decades of being unhealthy. Yeah. Look, I, I would start by honoring their choice. Like, I don't know yeah, what they know. Maybe right. that lettuce is a problem for them, mm. but, <laughs> but I would, <laughs> I would then try and get them to take the excessive significance out of the food. You know what I mean? Because yeah. the odds are that the cause isn't the food. The cause is deeper in their system, right. you know, um, and just just take the significance out because the thing about being human is we don't know how powerful we are. Mm-hmm. If we start channeling energy and belief systems into a, a storyline, man, that becomes powerful and yeah. it starts to generate the storyline. So we've got to be very careful. We, we can easily create a problem with a lettuce leaf if you believe long enough and hard enough, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. So, <laughs> so um, I always try and just get people to like you know, try, take the significance out a little bit, mm. right? It's food. Your body is amazing at assimilating this mm-hmm. stuff. Let's just take the stress out of it and then let's look at the bigger picture. But you're right, man. It, it's it's hard. And one thing I've learned after studying this now nonstop for 20 plus years is that, man, we, I, we, we don't know much. It's just there's so many. The more you study, the more variables you mm-hmm. find that come in that you have to account for. There's more variables to make all this story relative now. I don't know if that's a good thing or not, yeah. you know. But um, with someone like that, they've got to just strip it back to basics and start getting some earthy, rational mm. thinking going on, you know. And they have to touch base for themselves. For someone like that, I will talk and try and convince them, you've got to stop eating, man. Mm. You need to fast. Right. You know, you've got to start again. It's just messy now. Hey, mm. you, you're not going to know what's going on. Your gut's not going to know what's going on. Beautiful thing is if you can just stop eating for, I don't know, 12 hours, <laughs> maybe 24 hours, mm. maybe three days, we can do a fasting mimicking diet. There's a lot of things we can do. They're going to burn up all the waste matter in your gut and we can start again because that's what's going on. People are just over-consuming yeah. and that's a mess. The beautiful thing is if you stop eating, man, you, your body will burn and empty everything out. You can mm-hmm. start again. And the most important thing will happen is you will get your hunger reflex back. Mm-hmm. Now you're living, man. If, if, you don't, if you don't know the difference between feeling hungry and just feeling empty and lonely, you're in trouble. You're, you're in massive trouble and you're going to be eating your way into unhappiness yeah. because you, you, need, you know yourself, you need that feeling of being alive is being slightly hungry. You know what I mean? And that's why uh, one of the most important things for food is medicine, for health, and it is, is being comfortable in a faster state. You know, determ- de- you know, determined by your bio-individuality. But that, what we call hunger, that feeling is a hunger for life, a hunger to create, to do things, you know. And we need to feel comfortable with it because food's addictive, you know. And um, it, the food that we're surrounded by isn't normal natural food because normal natural food never tastes as amazing mm-hmm. as some of this junk food yeah. we've got nowadays. And we know it. The research is done. A lot of this sugary food, it lights up the nucleus accumbens, mm-hmm. the addictive center in the brain like a Christmas tree. Yeah. You it's know, so like- interesting that like Hungry Jacks and McDonald's, I, I don't like it, but there's still a nostalgic association with it from having it as a kid. When I smell it, mm. I unconsciously like want to have it, even though I don't consciously that smell i can feel it set off a whole 
cocktail of something that feels weirdly good. It's not by accident no. either. I mean, they, they've got um, – They've, they put in a lot of money to work out the bliss point. Right. And what they call the bliss point, which is that getting the salt, the fat, the sugars, everything yeah. right, right, dialed into the point where it triggers that chemistry. And it's Isn't chemistry. It's not a, it's not a, uh, um, a, a wafty memory in the ether. Da, da, da. No, that's mm. hooked up with chemistry, hormones, memories, everything. It's wild, powerful, man. And they market this towards kids. Mm-hmm. That's why they got clowns and happy. Yeah animated people, you know, that they're also working on that level, almost implanting false memories. Mm. Whereas the truth of the matter is healthy, healthy food's got an element of blandness to it. Not bland, like, oh, that tastes terrible, but they're, they're, they're nice, they're satisfying, and they're interesting to the palate, but they're not like drugs, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Anyway, yeah. And we, uh, Coca-Cola and all this sort mm. of stuff, it's, it's we we got to watch out, and that's why now we've got the first generation of kids that aren't expected to outlive their parents. Shame on us, right? You know, absolutely mm. shame on us. Shame on us for allowing government to lead us down that path. Shame on us for not having enough people in our community awake to have enough energy left to fight. Mm. You know what I mean? What's going on? Yeah. Everyone's like, we got so much information, and this is now overwhelming. Uh, on another level, not too much food, but too much information coming in. It's exactly the same. There's no empty space for mm. thought now. We're getting so much information, so many causes. We've got to be conscious and empathetic to a thousand different causes nowadays that there's no time left to actually pick one and react. Right. <laughs> yeah, amazing point. I mean, this emptiness you're speaking of, uh, most Eastern traditions refer to this emptiness, this void as a as a beautiful thing, yet in our culture, this emptiness, this void, is looked at as a very negative thing, and we're trying to fill up with gotta, food, gotta with social it. media, with sex, with TV, trying to fill up with all this unconscious material, but it never fills us up. And and it's 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 we've got to be careful because like it, this is consumerism mm. versus um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, j- just capitalism or something i'm not against capitalism yeah. I, I think that's the way the, the 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 community archetypal communities work you've got some people who got ideas they want to work harder than someone else well you get more if you want but what we're talking about here is is the 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 perp that they're putting consumerism into our consciousness mm-hmm. and like you said they're advertising it which is a form of hypnosis in a way that if you haven't got this status, this equipment, this or that, how could you possibly be happy? How could you possibly be looked at by your friends as someone that's successful or worth hanging out with? Mm. How could you think yourself worthy or beautiful if you don't haven't got this makeup? Do you look like this supermodel on TV? No, you don't because you haven't bought this makeup. This is what they're doing and we're just sitting uh, uh, witnessing as uh, observers, just watching this happening. Well, I don't know what happened to our elders or if we ever had any in our culture to put an end to it. Mm. We think our politicians are our elders. No, no they, they, they manage the, the the corporations. They basically check out chicks for the corporation's money machine. You know, they're not our elders. Mm. Yet we think, oh, no, the cabinet will look, our health minister will look. at. No, well, the health minister has allowed the first generation of kids not to outlive their parents. Mm. That's not an elder. You know, that's a job that someone does until five and goes home. So, um, yeah, we've got a lot on our plate. But uh, it's, and like you said, in the yogic traditions, that's why I pick a classic art form um, because we need to have people in the right form sitting talking about what, what is emptiness and that it's, oh, my God, I need it to create. It's not, it's not a, a lack. You know, the difference between aloneness and loneliness, we, we you know, or one alone, mm-hmm. or loneliness separate from the pack. That's trauma. We need to be educated again. Yeah. Because you you want that emptiness, you know, because then you create. And then now you've got to cycle emptiness, um, motivation. <laughs> you know, if you want to get motivated, don't eat. You know, you will eventually, the, the hormones and chemistry will change because it wants you to live. And you get, all of a sudden, you're motivated. You're not sleeping anymore. Mm. And it's the same with like, being in meditation, no, don't have the music going and don't do this. Just sit in the stillness until it is uncomfortable because now you're going to want to do stuff. Now right. you can think, you can contemplate, you can come up with wisdom. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, our culture is at a crossroads and I, I think more than ever we need um, 
guidance from people, you know, that have done the work yeah. 10 plus years, man, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that comfort zone. I mean, we can create that comfort zone anywhere with our heaters and our air conditioners and, and it's, it gets us sleepy, doesn't it? So the wisdom in getting uncomfortable, like where there are sweat lodges and there are platforms to do it, but it seems uh, this new generation coming up, it, it's so important for us parents to, to bring it in. And I see the predicament in myself of loving my kids so much and like spoiling them and seeing often that's not the way. Often you can see that, that produces uh, something that's not quite in alignment with it, with a deeper, deeper truth. So that discomfort, that kind of uh, tough love that I think is needed to be applied every now and then is really important, which is tricky when you love someone so much and you just want to, smother them in goodness oh, yeah, yeah. It, is, it is tricky because we've been infected yeah you know as yeah. the as the parents as yeah. the ones that are trying to lead yeah um we've been infected already from because yeah. we we were were you brought up like yeah that? were I, you brought up told you the value of fasting now and then or I, whatever or? i remember as a teenager as a teenager literally craving discipline i, I mean I, I i love how i was brought up i had a lot of freedom but i do remember a very specific feeling of being a little shit, craving discipline. So I would push buttons on purpose. I'd be rebellious on purpose to get some kind of like, no, nah, like, come on, time out or something like that. Yeah, I it's remember. Interesting. interesting you're conscious of that. Yeah. But I, I think that's why a lot of us as boys, we, we loved watching all those Kung Fu films, right. all those Shaolin monk videos and things like that because they were they were in a discipline mm-hmm. and then we, we could sense something from that. It was like, wow, look at those people. There's a strength there. There's mm-hmm. a depth and I think that's what we're craving, the yeah. depth, because when, when, like you're saying, we're smothering our kids with oh, what love, I don't know what it is, but it's the <laughs> soft love, not the hard love. Right. Um, and all we do is we, we inhibit their root system going down deep, mm-hmm. tapping deep into the earth, yeah. you know, where real nourishment comes from. Because we allow them to, oh, you don't want to do your piano lessons? Oh, okay, then. Yeah. I'm not going to fool you crying. Ah, no, no, don't cry. Okay, let's try it. Soccer. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. You know what I mean? So I it's, it's kind of tricky like that. But um, I think we're all awaking to it, trying to do it. Mm-hmm. But when there's a break in the legacy, in the lineage, mm-hmm. it's like it's you haven't got that momentum behind you of a, of a legacy. So I think that's what our generation is having to do now is just yeah. pick ourselves up, dust ourselves off. And it wasn't our parents' fault. It was that everyone was just doing what they shunted do. down that pathway. Yeah. Um, and now we have to realize that, wow, you know, more people in America kill themselves than are killed in wars and right. things like this. Suicide in America, we, and I'm picking on America because they're, they're leading this consumerist ideology, mm-hmm. is um, – it's obvious that ain't working, man. Mm-hmm. You know, yet the Kardashians are still king and queens over there. Well, they're all queens now, aren't they? I don't, <laughs> no kings in that family. But um, you know what I'm saying? We still aspire. Why? Because the media machine is powerful. People need to realize that you can call it TV. I call it a hypnosis machine, man. You yeah. know, um, and we have to ask ourselves the question, why? why do we really enjoy – the macabre films mm-hmm. and the really crazy ones more. It's not, it's wrong. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's just a default f- setting in the brain. Yeah. We, we look for that because it, it makes us feel. So yeah, it's, it's interesting, but um, everything in health, when we look at the, the most things that are most important to do for your health, health lifestyle that you create is um, they're all things that push you out of that comfort zone. Like fasting, genetically, it changes your genetics. You're doing mm-hmm. genetic engineering when you fast, yeah. right? You, you shift genes. You turn these ones off, these ones on, and it's all beneficial, right? Okay, exercise-wise, yeah, yoga is great and all this sort of stuff. High intermittent training where you five for five minutes, six minutes, you just blow out, go nuts. Mm-hmm. That shifts genes really quickly mm-hmm. in a positive way. And it just goes on and on and on. Like all, all, all these things that take us out of our comfort zone for like um, ice baths, same thing, mm-hmm. or saunas, you know, heat shock proteins or mm-hmm. all this type of stuff. So we, we as, as an animal, um, need to be put into uncomfortable situations for a little, little bits of time. And that's what keeps us alive, mm-hmm. keeps us on, keeps us on. Yeah. 
And I think, and it's not comfortable, but does it serve a purpose? Oh yeah, because the most important thing about health is your mind and the mind is dependent on the environment. Mm -hmm. So if you shift the environment into an uncomfortable place where the lazy mind does not want to be, but your trained mind is going to breathe its way through and just go, it's all good because it's going to change because the only thing in life that doesn't change is change itself. I'm good Mm -hmm. with that. That wisdom is integrating into me. And I now am not going to lose my mind because I'm in ice or in a sauna or twisted weirdly yeah. <laughs> in yoga. And I think that's the most important thing in health is to is to keep the mind honest and keeping it off the throne, you know, yeah. because the mind wants to get on the throne and pretend as king or queen. It's not, you know, that's your spirit, that's your shen, that that's reserved for for that that part of yourself. Um, but for those that don't have a discipline where they're doing that, I can guarantee they got the joker sitting on the throne. There's no way that they're, um, they're, there's some, something noble in that mm-hmm. position or it's, it's, it's vacant. Yeah. You know, and you can see it, man. You, if you talk or hang with these people long enough, you'll see it. Ah, oh, there mm-hmm. it is. There it is. Yeah. It seems yeah. like we're yearning for this rite of passage, this initiation. Mm. Uh, as, again, as a teenager, I remember a very vis- vis- vividly craving initiation, discipline. So it seems like, yeah, the seniors, the elders, or at least people that have been doing these disciplines for 10 plus years uh, kind of have a responsibility, a role to, to bring in, yeah, that tough love, that rite of passage, that mm. initiation. It's so valuable and it can be done, yeah, in an ice bath and walk about in a sweat lodge, in a yoga class, in a jujitsu class. It, it can be done left, right and center, but it, it's not comfortable. So it, to voluntarily do that, mm. it's really, really tricky. If your parents aren't in, lovingly encouraging you into it, if they're overly pushing you into it, it's such a fine balance, it seems, huh? It is. And it only ever works if you're connected to a community right because if you're doing it um alone trying to prove something and you can't connect with other people you can't get nourished on that level yeah. share stories it, it, yeah because i've seen heaps of people that they they just flagellate themselves you know they just put themselves through trauma yeah. almost but it's not integrating something's missing because they they they're not doing that whilst being connected on a heart level mm. or a spiritual level or whatever we call it. And having fun with it. I mean, I remember them, man, being yeah. brought up as a Jewish kid. I hated well, yeah. going to synagogue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My mom's Jewish. So we'd, be, we'd go to synagogue and I hated it. These angry old men <laughs> preaching and I just hated it. There was no joy. So it, that, that tough love, that fine balance of playfulness at the same time, the discipline, the discomfort at the same time, the tender loving, we're, we're finding that balance. Cause before I think it was just tough, yeah. just freaking tough. Yeah. And that, that I think had its purpose. That was the way. And now I think, especially in spiritual communities, we've gone the other polarity of like, you can never say no. You mm. can like, the, there's barely any Toughness. Yeah, the left is just spiraling. Yeah. And, th- and this is the once again another uh, – it's, it's the yin and yang balance. It's mm-hmm. balance. Health is about balance because for, for anything to be manifested on this planet, there needs to be two polarities, positive and negative, you know, night and day, hot and cold. There needs mm-hmm. – for any relative meaning – between the atoms and cells, it needs to be polarity. And like someone, can, and you've got to be honest and integral. If, you, if you're if you a tough guy, a hard guy or a lady or whatever, that's fine. But there still needs to be balanced by a little bit of humor. Like you could be a Musashi style teacher and you're hard, 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 expect a lot from your people. That's fine. But if you don't crack a smile once a year to give that relative, mm-hmm. oh, there it is. It's there. It's not vacant there's the humor there's the inner child still mm-hmm. alive you need to see proof the inner child is still mm-hmm. there because um without it what have you got man yeah. no one wants to be super skilled and talented but just dry yeah. as a stone and and that's that's the gift of our kids you know you see that smile man yeah. it's like what is that is just pure shen spirit yeah. unfiltered through anything and it's like whoa how how do we m- carry that through our conditioning system on our planet so you can integrate into whatever we have to integrate into nowadays mm-hmm. without losing it yeah. 
it's it's just rare that it happens. It's almost like it, it can't happen. It's almost like when you study health on a philosoph- philosophical level, you have to break. You have you have to break open so you, you can mend back together stronger mm. again. It's and that's once again all these adaptogens, all these things we're talking about for health, even muscle building. You're tearing muscle apart so it grows together with scar tissue stronger. And it's almost like that's what has to happen. We have to be that um, that caterpillar that's that's now turning into the butterfly, but it's it's wrapped, it's wrapped, and it's yeah. pushing it out of the cocoon is what makes it swing strong so it can fly. And that's where we talked about before the the parenting role of the duet is a tough love. We can't be too soft because then their little wings aren't going to fly right. and then no other butterfly is going to want to play with them. Oh, well <laughs> you that. end up with a with a with like a lonely kid because they yeah. didn't learn. Then, no, 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 no. This is, you, you are only relevant as a part of something greater, mm. you know, and your greatest asset will be how loved you are. You know, people will do anything for you if you're loved. And the only way you can be loved that much is if you love that much yourself. So we're, we're in the business as, as parents trying to teach love. Yes. And this is when, when like, wow, okay, that's, that should be easy. Is it? Was your dad loved by his dad, mm. which was loved by he, cause here's the legacy now, because when that, when that chain's broken, Man, how, how do you? Because no one talks about it. Not in their, their our parents' successive generations. You talked about, Dad. I I don't know. Sure. Do you love me? To, God, imagine that conversation hundred years ago. <laughs> it's like you, you know. Um, but the truth of the matter is, is that the, this is the elephant in the room. We're doing everything trying to prove ourselves worthy or yeah. lovable or this or that. Um, without actually focusing on the, the yeah. thing. And that's, that's what we're saying. Yeah. Be, be not hard on yourself, but, but have a discipline. Mm-hmm. Um, but is the love there? I do. Why do I show up to jujitsu and get mangled by everyone's mm-hmm. better than me at my school? <laughs> yeah. um, because I love it, man. Right. Uh, and that's why I do it. And um, if, if you can't identify with the love in the art that you have mm-hmm. chosen to dedicate the rest of your life to mm-hmm. find a new one, man, Yeah, find a new one. Or at least find a teacher you love, mm-hmm. and then eventually you'll love that form. Mm-hmm. But where's the love? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, with narcissism peaking more and more in the modern day, I think people feel an entitlement and a, a kind of a feeling of specialness that then uh, isolates the rest of the world. Like, I'm special, but no one else is special. Mm-hmm. But the weird, slippery slope of that is it needs constant reinforcement. Constant likes on social media, constant praise, constant I love you. And if it's not there, a feeling of um, the our Western perception of what emptiness is. Yeah. And then we're trying to fill up. And this is what we're seeing with the superstars killing themselves. We praise them. We mm. worship them as a culture for being rich and famous and beautiful. And they're all killing themselves. Mm. And it, 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 yet... It's so alluring, so enticing to crave that narcissistic feeling of specialness. Yeah. Which can't, it, it can't be maintained. It, it can't. Seems. It's intoxicating. I'll give it that. Mm. And, and, uh, but it's, if it's fragile, it's false. Yeah. Because you know, what we're talking about is, is the archetypal juice of power. You know, um, and if you're fragile or if you're knocked off center because you got a bad comment on social media, well, then good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've got, there's a crack to have a look at yeah. and you can mend that and it will be stronger. And what, what do you mend that crack with? We'll, we'll try forgiveness first. That's an amazing mm-hmm. balm that, that makes all things stronger um, because for you to be able to forgive, you must be a little bit humble. Mm-hmm. And if you've got no humility, you can never forgive. If you, and, then, and, okay, and if you can't forgive because you haven't got enough humility, then look for the arrogance. It's mm-hmm. there. It's a stench somewhere in your world, you know. Yeah. And yet, but but it's um, I, I think I think there's just too many of us on the planet, man. Yeah. I, I think we're just <laughs> yeah. no one's getting it's no one's getting one on one treatment anymore. Right. Attention. I think that's our challenge. It's like, man, there's so many of us um, <laughs> that we're all, and the economy runs on distraction. the The economy we've got doesn't want you to be healthy. It can't. Mm. It would break the 
budget. Right. That's that's a crazy thing. I I used to talk about it a lot. I don't really anymore in in, in my lecturing stuff, but. It's like just that concept alone. Why, why don't we think about the concept? And we could easily prove it that if we had a healthy culture or a culture that was pushed into healthy habits mm. and we use that hypnotic medium television to, to secure that in the consciousness of the people, we, we would um, we'd bust the economy on our planet because the taxes that we make from the pharmaceuticals, mm. from this, from that, keep the, the government going. So it's... It's it's really an interesting trust issue yeah. that we've got going on. But but once again, that concept is interesting for two to three seconds at most before we move on to something else, mm. because there is something else to move on to. And um, I guess the, my whole quest in health is to get enough energy and she running through the system where the the consciousness is is running so bright with. Uh, illuminating chi that it's like whoa no that's true and then once you really get it you just don't participate anymore Mm. you can't really have the conversation because how can you have a conversation with other fish now that you're a frog and you got out onto land saying no there is something outside of this water and we can live there and there's a whole world out there and all the other fish are going that's just it's just bullshit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're a crazy dude. You don't even look like us anymore. You know, you've got right. little legs and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's like, ah. So, you, you know, the conversation kind of ends there for a lot of people once they have seen something, unless you have a community where you can talk about it. But um, talk about what? You know, it doesn't cook the rice, does it? Talk does not cook the rice. Mm-hmm. You know, we have to now amend our habits and our lifestyle and create a strong community based in this direction. And um, it's it's interesting, but I think that's the role of health, and that's why we get back to our guy that doesn't want the lettuce in his thing. <laughs> it's like, really, is that the issue, or is it? Because whilst you're still alive and living, there should be a prioritized way you're spending your thoughts and your day. Mm. And if it's just obsessed about your physical being, mm. then it will be locked in because it's very rarely the causative factor. You it's know? so interesting because that particular person i'm thinking of a particular person i love oh, him oh the burger love boy him. is real burger love him boy deeply. Is real. you know who you are yeah, yeah, yeah. Hater. and uh spent years like trying like because i love him so deeply family member trying so deeply to have a positive influence and mm. give advice and change and all that pushing just put up more resistance mm. and the denial and the defensiveness wouldn't let any healthy information in but as soon as i just kind of gave space and just that kind of balance between the tough love which before it was just like tough just come mm. fucking come on to then trying to find that balance of like loving and just accepting and being yeah. at the same time like come on get on the fucking exercise bike or like mm. just, yeah, it's been an interesting navigation. But as soon as I pulled back a little bit and didn't come on to him so heavily, uh, some positive shifts happen, at least some peacefulness in the relationship. Yeah, and that, that's because of your wisdom as a teacher because that's what we learn in jiu-jitsu. If you want someone to come this way, I don't pull them because then they pull back. Yeah. I have to push them. Then they push into me. And then I change yeah. quickly when they're not ready for it. And then they're coming this way right. with their own volition. Yeah. And that, that's exactly the same resistance we get with with health, mm-hmm. you know, with people. When you see, wow, you know, you need to do this. It's so obvious. But if you try and pull them that way, yes. they pull back. Right. And so that's why I never do that. Mm-hmm. In, in Not now. I used to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for a good probably 10 years as a practitioner, I used to. Because you couldn't see it. You know, you couldn't see why they wouldn't mm-hmm. want to come this way. Um but now I realize that, okay, I don't even focus on the food now. If that's where you're at and I can see there's a resistance there, I'm not going to try and pull you. I know it's going to happen. You're going to pull back. So then I, I try and get them, hey, just don't forget about your food for a while. I know your gut hurts and all like that, but let's now focus on relationships or focus on exercise or focus on breathing or focus on mm. something else, take their mind off it. Yeah. And then um, when you focus on another element of health, it all – leads into the same core so it shifts everything mm. so um your gut will change um by focusing on other things and then that gut's probably what's causing the problem in the food you know it's theory yeah. but that's it's it's based on science and like for even nowadays like a lot of these people i'll say okay let's let's just have a break from thinking about food and nutrition how's your sleep mm. 
hardly anyone says, yeah, I'm sleeping like a baby, man. You know, like, and, and now we know with the science that if you're, if you're having less than seven hours and it's broken sleep and it's, you know, welcome to our world, mm. kids, but yeah. that, that's changing the microbiome. It's changing the nature of the bugs in your mm. gut, which are, which have an impact on how you digest food, how you assimilate it, how you make certain hormones, how you think, how you feel. So there's always a different way. It's the, it's just the art of known resistance, you know, because that's the thing of health. It's it's so big. You don't have to just focus on vitamins and minerals. Mm. And um, and it's quite often when people don't want to take something out. You just then you can maybe add something in, right. see what happens. There's 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 many a way, but I always think it's the best thing you do for someone. It's like okay, let's just stop thinking about mm. the food. It's once again, it's like, ah, it's tight. It can't be tight mm. because the way I roll with nutrition and food is medicine, all this sort of stuff. It's like, I try and manipulate a person into a way where they work it out themselves. That's why I don't try and put my diet on everyone else, That's great. you know, because yeah. it just doesn't, doesn't work doesn't and work. it's disrespectful. Mm-hmm. You know, how, even if I had all the labs done on someone, then I'm supposed to match a diet that I think is right. You know, no, you, you, this is where the intuitive angle comes in. Yeah, of course I can strip it back, take out all the junk food, take out all the processed foods, try and get you eating, um, you know, food that breaks down slowly. So you don't have to eat every two hours and things like that. Mm. And then, yeah, you're going to be nutrient deficient. So let's maybe try and jack out some, some nutrients, uh, medicinally to get you on the way, you know, there's ways around it, but at the end of the day, um, you got to get to the point where you just intuitively know mm. what to eat, when to eat, and who to eat with. Mm. You know, and, and then and then you can just get on with life, man. And my whole pursuit of the reason I study health is so we don't have to have this conversation anymore because yeah. it's not the most interesting conversation. Enjoy life. <laughs> yeah, what's I want to know? Like, hey, man, what how's your yoga going? Or how's your jujitsu going? Or what are you loving? You know, what, what's what's going on? Mm. Not like what do you eat? Right. <laughs> Yeah, it's just even though that's my game in the restaurant game or this <laughs> and that, but it's it's um, people think oh because the raw kitchen that we're all hardcore into a vegan diet and all mm-hmm. like that. No, we're not yeah. at all. The only reason that menu is the way it is because that's the food we eat mm-hmm. and we're authentic. So we're only going to make and sell that food, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And um, it's it's nothing more complex than that. And as a caveat. I don't think that's the healthiest diet for everyone in the world to have. Right. Yeah, the amount of people I've known, including myself, that went extremely raw vegan. Yeah, uh, we, all, we all did it. Yeah, and for me personally, I did it too prematurely. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I'm starting my yoga practice. All yogis are vegetarian or vegan, mm-hmm. right? So I just went excessive. And luckily, because I, I was curious about nutrition and uh, somewhat connected. I was able just to make little tweaks, mm. but the amount of people I've met that have gone way, way overboard and bottomed out and now like not even carnivore, just like at McDonald's, you know, triple bacon, uh, going full into the, into and that, that's that my realm. thing. It's like, man, just make this stable. Mm. And, and that's what, even back in the day when we started the Royal Kitchen, I was trying to tell everyone that would listen, you don't be a hundred percent raw, mm. but no, no one was. It was the damage had already been done right. by people that were like saying, if you're not a hundred percent, you got to try harder. And it was like, no, nah. because I come from a naturopathic background. I already had, by the time I got into that, I already had 12, 13, 14 years mm. on the go in the, in the industry front line consulting mm. people. So it wasn't like I hadn't seen anyone or no. talked about it. I'd seen by that stage, probably a thousand people, you know? Yeah. And so, um, I was trying to explain to people that it's a detox diet at that level. Nothing better too, by the way. Mm. They're enzyme rich whole foods as a cleansing detox diet. Dude, find a better one. Mm. Nah, you won't, right? But how long do you need to detox for? Mm. You know what I mean? For one person, it's going to be two years. For someone else, it's going to be two days. Mm. You know, so detoxing, what does that mean? It means it's cooling, cleansing, it's high water. It's going to like flow through and pull stuff out of your system. It's amazing like that. So do Mm. I, do, um, do I ever go 100% raw? Yeah, I do for a week mm. now and then as a cleanse, a detox, and as a discipline. Mm. But um, it never made sense to me right from the start because then what we're supposed to expect that soups and broths and herbal teas and all that are destroyed by the heat, it's like mm. it just doesn't make sense. It's yeah. never been like that in any culture. Mm. But um, there's something great about raw food, you know, but it's got to be kept in context and it's got to be kept in balance to your individual system. Um and and that's the way. I mean, don't get me wrong. In my restaurant, everything's super healthy there, and the food's amazing. 
Um, and anyone that eats there is going to feel better for it because we use only good oils. We use all the good stuff, but, um, does it mean you have to eat that menu for the rest of your life? No, absolutely not. Right. Because I've seen it too. And that's, that's why I, unfortunately, um, I can't find a camp that I can fit into. Mm. You know what I mean? I can't, I don't fit into the vegan camp because I'm a practitioner first yeah, and foremost. I and, I, and I've seen people that haven't been vegan for three years, right? Four years. They've been vegan for 10 years mm. and, I get their panels done and they're nutrient deficient in mm. certain areas. And it's just because genetically they can't metabolize soy. They can't do this. It's just not going to work for mm. them. Does it mean they jump onto McDonald's bandwagon and start like cutting the heads off animals and like, you know, ah, just because I'm hungry? No, it means now you integrate into the next level you have to do. Because my whole approach is I want to tread as lightly on the planet as possible. And I don't want to lose my compassion. I love animals. I love everything. But I've been saying for, God, at least 15 years that if you think plants haven't got consciousness, then you're asleep. You know, everything that lives has a consciousness and has connection to other things of its species. They communicate and there's, and then now they're finding that out that the science is coming through, coming mm-hmm. through, coming through. Tree forests are like major communities. You know, they're, they're saying that they've got a different language. I get it. So, and then that's why now all the hardcore meat eaters are going, they're using this information and saying, there you go, you hypocrite. And it's like, not me, man. You can't, t- yeah. because it's like, I know that when I take, when I eat plants and other things like that, I'm, I'm eating life. I know that, but like, Hey, all of us have to live. So you have to take life to live. So everything's eating something. So make your life count, mm-hmm. you know? And, um, if you eat meat, great. You're eating higher up the, um, mm. food chain, make your life count. You're taking more sentient expressive life. Mm. So make your life count. That's all. Like I, I just don't buy the game that, that um, we're going to have a fairy tale existence on this planet, man. It's brutal here on this planet. It's Everything's hard. got a brutal existence. It's brutal, it? man. Yeah. And that's the, it has to be. Yeah. You know, just don't torture things. Don't be cruel. Mm-hmm. You know, like I've got no problem with the meat industry if it's done mm-hmm. compassionately yeah. and those animals are respected and all like that because – it's just the way it is. Man. Yeah. We, you know. That conversation needs to spread. Right now it's such it's a not thick, a popular one, man. It's, not, you know, like, it's such a thick uh, um, argument right now between mm. kind of vegan and carnivore. Yeah. And just coming into that middle path of uh, yeah. nah, a complete shift of consciousness is required, not just this or not just that. But, but then let's not – Let's be clear, like we said right mm. at the start of this conversation, is like the compassion has to be there. Mm. You know, the consciousness has to be there. The humanitarian uh, virtue has to be there. Mm. That does not mean you can never eat meat. Right. You know, you can you can have all that and still eat meat, mm. but it means you've got to participate in where the money's going mm. because McDonald's and all that those sort of stuff, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't yeah. know if they're being nice to the yeah. and, and um, chicken treat and all that, that sort of stuff. Mm. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's conveyor belts where chicken's heads could get lopped off. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if you're cool with that, then, hey, I respect you. Mm. You know what I mean? But um, be conscious of it. Let's not be um, – and can we do it a better way? Because – we are treating this planet like uh, with total disregard and disrespect. We're treating all the animals on this planet with complete disdain. No, they're not conscious. They're nothing. They're just they're just something that grows out of the planet for us to consume. And um, I find that distasteful. Yeah. You know, I, th- I think we have to uh, – but then there's industries have to change. I would love to see massive permaculture farms in the, in the future where mm-hmm. their animals are harvested – you know, but they're allowed to be a cow is allowed to be a cow. A pig's allowed to express pigness. Mm. So the chickens are, and they you can see they've got these huge ones in America where they just rotate. They mm. they wander around, and then when it's time to to harvest them, it's done humanely. Do you see it happening? I Gosh. see it happening on small levels. Yeah. Um, I don't know how we take out the multinationals. Mm. I don't, and um, maybe we don't. Maybe that's our quest here on this planet is just to to um, keep fighting battles, but maybe we never win the war. Mm. I, I don't know. And, and every time I go through that thought experiment, I just get back to, it's silly, man. You're just, you're just living in the moment, making decisions based on the yeah. moment with your virtues as the filters, you know. And I think that's it. But I, I can't get on board with the extreme left mm. vegan community that judge everyone mm. as being inferior to them. Because I've seen, I've seen good people um, that, Dude, you're you're just 
your health is not where it should. I'm different. I, I'm fine. I, I'm a plant based eater. I'm, mm. I'm all good. But I've still got a massive question mark around DHA, the omega three DHA. Right. Um, people are going to say, yeah, you can get it from hemp seeds and flax seeds, can you? Because mm. we can get omega threes, we can get um, linoleic acid and stuff like that. But it's got to trip one more time. It mm. needs one more enzyme pathway to get to make DHA, and it's split up. It's specific bonds, mm. right? And there's a lot of controversy whether we can actually do it enough in our system. Uh, and from that's plants, what my- From plants alone. From plants oh, alone, from a right. complete plant-based diet. I, I'm staying strong to it. I'm doing the experiment, mm. you know, um, because that's what I do. You know, I, I'm representing that area. I put all my research into how can a 100% plant-based person be as healthy as possible. Mm. And so we're looking at that. Okay, turmeric helps with these enzymes. This helps. Mm. Um, but- I'm doing the work, I'm staying true to it, but I'm still not 100% convinced. And that puts me outside the community. Right. Because, no, you've got to fly the flag with 100% conviction mm. that the vegan diet is the healthiest diet. It has to be the healthiest diet and we're designed for it and things like that. And it's like, man, I follow the sciences and um, I just can't get on board that boat, you know. Like, yeah. for me, it's a different picture. It's like it's admirable if you want to sacrifice a little bit of your health because you don't believe in in the system at the moment. You think we are going to fish the oceans out and you don't really need it so you don't eat it. I like that story. Mm-hmm. Right? That's what I'm rolling. But I yeah. also reserve the right to know there's other people that their health seems to need it. And I, I need other people to be as healthy as possible so their shen, their spirit can enlighten, so they can solve bigger problems not to undermine the life that we take to eat. But this the, the bigger problem there is like the Navajo Indians and all these guys, when they take a beast down or something else, yeah. they would sit in the heart. There wasn't like a – it wasn't an Instagram moment. It was a real they, – they knew this beast had been taken, the spirit was there, I will take your spirit together, now we'll live. It's different, man. Yeah. We need to find that again rather than everyone must be vegan and eat tofu mm-hmm. and stuff because a lot of the vegans aren't doing it well, man. They're not. And, um, and I hate I hate labels anyway. You know, you're a vegan, you're this and that because I've seen too much of it. Like I said, 20 years in the game now, the amount of people I saw that were staunch, hardcore vegans hanging shit on it. Everyone else that wasn't, oh, where are you now? Five, six years down, mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah, I just I couldn't get over the anemia. Mm-hmm. I couldn't get over this. Right. I couldn't get over that. And now I feel better. It's mm. like, well, I kind of think you owe a lot of people an apology then. You yeah. Know? That's what I reckon. Don't, and this is the other beef I've got. Um, the beef in, you've got. I know, wrong <laughs> choice of word, but in the health game is that do the 10 years, man, before do you start telling everyone that you're a health authority. Oh, yeah. Because you pull the trigger too early, mm-hmm. you know, and um, just just stay back, do, do the work, do the experiment. Having said all of that, I still believe it is possible. Mm-hmm. I still believe we'll work it out. And I still believe that in in the end that if you want to be a hundred percent plant-based eater for your own reasons, mm-hmm. I think we can make it happen, but we, but it's, it's got to be done properly. It's got to be done properly. Yeah. That was a big rant. And no, I, it was a good I don't rant. know if people want to hear that I stuff. I love but, your rants. But, um, we, you could rant for it's, hours. It's good be... for me to get off my chest. <laughs> oh, we've Sorry had some. that was no, that was great. Was, but Thank you, he. That was but it's just, it's just not an easy conversation to have it's because it's not good for business. It's right. not good for um, getting a following of, not mm. that I care. I have, I have no care for any following. I don't need a following. But um, it's just not what people do. They've got to pick a, a path and then just fly that flag and then shut yourself down to any. Yeah. I think that um, flying the flag needing to belong to a club. I mean, that tribalism is so thick Mm -hmm. in our circuitry and you being kind of in the middle, on the fringe, uh, just objective and integral, looking at the big picture, it it triggers one that is in there, that tribalism that Mm -hmm. wants you to be in this club or that club, like just own the club and especially running a a business associated with a particular uh, Mm -hmm. scene or the left or the right. Um, yeah, I can see how that would trigger one. I mean, it's been, it's, this kind of shit has triggered people for centuries. Look at Jesus Christ. Look at all these like visionaries mm. that are, uh, are living a beautiful life, but they're not in this club or that club. They're just being 
it, it, it infuriates a lot of people. So it, yeah. it doesn't surprise me. People want it simple. They, they want it black and white. Yeah. And I get it. I get it. And also it is emotional. Like mm-hmm. a, lot, a lot of the people on the left, a lot of people that are staunch vegan, they, they, they're sensitive, man. Right. And when they see the atrocities done to innocent animals, I get it, man. Yeah. I totally, oh, and we, that's why I don't eat meat. I, I, I get it. Um, but it's just not that simple. And you're not doing the movement any favors by trying to run with vegan propaganda stuff. Mm. Because, and it's, it, um, don't get me wrong. It's not, there's plenty, if not more propaganda on the other, you know, the, totally. the hardcore meat side mm-hmm. of things as well. Yeah. I'm not saying they got it right, we got it wrong or anything like that, but it's just all of us need to take a step back. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and focus on the other principles, like I'm saying, hey, how about, how about we just eat less for a start mm-hmm. and, and get it on? Because that's the bigger problem. We're over consuming food. We're just raping this planet. Um, what do you think of the, the parasite thing? I remember, do you know Dr. Robert Kassar? Yeah. 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 I, me- I remember watching one of his clips, him talking about parasites, like most of us, uh, feeding the body according to what the parasites want rather than uh, a conscious choice of this is what might body actually wants and this is what's going to feed it optimally mm. it's the parasites going feed me the mcdonald's feed me the this mm. feed me the that do you think potentially the reactivity we're seeing is is i mean we know a lot of mind stuff is produced in the gut now yeah I and mean, we, and then the question is how how much have we mapped yeah. of the microbial species right. in the gut and how much have we mapped and understood the interplay and the synergy between these guys, what do colonies do? None, minimal, minor percentages, mm. you know. So the great untapped inner world there. Um, and I, I believe that we get, we're dialing it in and, and we're mm. seeing now that, yeah, microbial interplay with our genome and their genome is, is causing a lot. Mm. And um, I, I think that's got a huge part to do with it. And I think that's why the fasting is so important because they're fragile, man. It's is if you can just, and, and then when you've, when you've done it, you know, too, mm. when, when, when you have fasted for a little bit, and when I say that too, I, I, I'm honoring fasting, start with just 12 hours, <laughs> Just chronological eating, you know, just stop eating for 12 hours. Do that for a couple of times a week. Just get used to that. Then, um, maybe a fasting mimicking diet or something. Don't, don't go hardcore into fasting, but, but when you do go into a fast and, and you can pull it off three days, something like that, you're completely different mm. after that, man. And, and we know that you've just burnt off a, a lot of toxin, a lot of stuff, but you've changed your, your um, your microbiome mm. hugely mm. because a lot of these guys, these bugs that are craving the sugars, craving the sugars, and we know that they're stimulating cravings. Um, you don't feed them for one to two days. They're dead. They're gone. Are they? Yeah. Ah. They, 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 they don't, I mean, hey, but caveat, a lot of it goes, goes dormant. Mm. And that's why it's still all new science. Mm. You know, that's why you'll never hear me saying, we know this for sure. Right. Really? Because maybe in five years' time it's changed because mm. that's what I've seen my whole career. It's like, oh, it's still true, but it's had a context now. That's true if this happens or mm. whatever. But um, So a lot of it can go dormant. And that's why when we fast, we pull in the um, phenolics and the, and the herbs mm. because um, you can take in certain herbs and things like that when you're fasting and you'll pull them out of a dormant state and kill them. And that's what you want to do is a kill off phase as well. And then you can regrow a whole new culture in your gut. And it is a culture. It's a, it's a culture of microbes that generate a creative Mm. way of being. Yeah. (laughs) You know what I mean? And this is food cravings and everything else. And you can lose that within two days of eating shit food again. It's that dynamic. Really? But I, I think a huge part of it. Is, and let's look at the mushroom world again, the uh, mycelium world. You look at that cordyceps, man. And that, that's, that's, that's a, a, a mycelium, a fungal spore that lays its spores land on the top of a, um, a caterpillar's head. Yeah. Directs the caterpillar exactly where it wants it to, to sit. <laughs> it's basically remote controlling this thing. <laughs> and then it's like, yeah, we, we like it here, everyone. Yeah, like it here. Oh, over there a bit more. Yeah, yeah, okay. Boom. Boom. Blows, like, kills the, 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 the caterpillar and then uses its, its head and its inner body as the, as a host, then grow its spores out through the top of the head. Incredible. It's, it's a fucking nightmare to look at the, <laughs> the photos of this thing. <laughs> but, um, but this is like, let's look at that metaphor. So you've got a, you've got a parasite con- just controlling, bypassing conscious awareness mm-hmm. of that animal. So to think that we are, um, uh, absolved from that, we don't get it. I, I, it doesn't make sense to me. I yeah. think on some level, we too are being controlled. 
um, by by that bypassing it. And that, that's the thing. That's why I always try and um, get people to entertain the idea that that food is a drug, mm. you know, and then to think, wow, do you really want those muffins and those things like that? Or is it that just that yeah. the craving's coming somewhere else? Not that they say you can never have it, but um, fasting's a lifestyle. You know, I mean, then we more, can finally listen to our gut, like yeah, we've always been exactly, told. Exactly, man. You know, if you really want to listen to your gut, you've got to stop eating a little bit. Yeah. You got to, you just can't always be full of food because then that food is being broken down into messages. It's, it's information. There's an essence to every food. Every food has an essence. It has something to offer mm-hmm. to the story. And, um, it gets broken down. And this is, this is the, the quantum physics, mm-hmm. the, the, uh, the art of eating. And, um, and that's why, where does that lead us? That leads us back into wild crafting again. And th- this is why we are so far away from the perfect diet mm. here because we're not eating seasonally. We're not eating locally. Right. We should be eating stuff that's grown here forever because those plants are assimilating environmental mm. factors that then when they get into us living in the same environment, we grow stronger for it and we can adapt to the we're not even we're eating oranges from America that have been sprayed that is it's just and year round like we'll pick round. our favorite food and then we'll eat it year round I remember this it's woman confusion this confusion. woman I knew in Canada um, she was having inflammatory problems and was trying to make a baby was trying to fall pregnant she was told by her doctor to get her thyroid removed and her parathyroid removed and these drastic measures and she just listened to her gut and thought that's a bit extreme. So she went and saw a naturopath and got a food sensitivity test. Off the charts was cranberries because she was taking cranberry extra- extract or cranberry seed extract for her urinary tract infection. But because of her sensitivity to it, even though it's a healthy thing, she was taking it too often, too much, for too long, it built up inflammation. She took cranberries out of her diet, fell pregnant. In yeah. no time. Yeah. And that's a healthy thing, mm. but was having it in excess. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, it, again, a blessing and a curse. Of Context. Like, yeah. We've got all these supplements and herbs and foods available. And, and, the, and when, because I spent a lot of time contemplating health and it, it, you end up, it becomes political, mm. it becomes social, blah, blah, blah. And it always, for me, comes down to farming, man. It's right. like our farming method. It, and that's coming down to economy. A farmer has to, is a business. Mm. So you have to just grow acres and acres and acres and acres of, of wheat or corn and then harvest it like, a, like there's a war going on. So just so you can get numbers up just to make enough money to keep going next year, you know, and it's just, and then, so we eat that food. We we eat the product of that. Yeah. And it's just, and now our gut's confused. We're always hungry. We're, we're never, we're struggling to be healthy on a foundation level. Mm. What needs to happen is we need um, farmers markets everywhere and um, people growing food native to the area mm. and growing in the environment without chemicals and sprays and things like that. And and then we just eat within a twenty k radius. It, that that would change everything because then it's seasonal straight away. So you're yeah. not getting a build up of like tomatoes all year round or something. Well, that salicylates. You're gonna get you're gonna have salicylate or not if it's not tomatoes, some it's some other salicylate food. You get a build up. The liver can't break it down. It mm. becomes nutrient deficient because it's got no more, you know, B three or whatever else to break this down because it uses a lot of it. And, and you know what I mean? It's just it's very yeah. simple, but it's it's now very complex because we're not living a natural life. And it's got to get back to, to farming principles that are sustainable and natural. And you know what's going to happen then? Your food choices become very simple. Mm. You don't get to walk into a supermarket and go, what are we having tonight? You, you don't get to choose, man. This is all that's available. That's all that grows at this time of year that grows here at the moment under these situ- conditions. Mm. You will eat that. And you know what's going to happen? People all of a sudden start to appreciate their food again. Right. They're going to enjoy the food because they're going to participate. They respect it. And, and then bio, biochemically, we're just going to fall back into alignment. And then we can get to the real work of health again, which is trying to capture morning sunlight. You try to do that in this world, this rat mm. race we live in, because there is the next level of quantum biology. We are solar driven mm. and people don't understand that. They think, Oh, light. No information. Mm. This is, this is a frequency. It's a spectrum. It's a waveform that has 
digitized information. And when we're exposed to that, it kicks off hormones mm. from the back of the eye straight to the pituitary. And we, it's there. Hormones are produced from sunlight, everything. And people don't, we, we, everyone knows that vitamin D is a sunlight thing, isn't it? Yeah. It, well, that's not a vitamin for a start. That's a hormone, mm. right? It's a, it's a hormone that drives your immune system, everything out. That's just one part of one spectrum. And we, and this, once again, this is not crazy stuff. This is what we as a, as an animal, a collection of cells grew up on. So, you know, evolved on. And now we've removed ourselves, but our genes still run on that. So we can't just remove yourself from the natural environment and think we're going to be healthy because you've just removed yourself from the source of health. And so by not getting morning exposure to sunlight, not getting this and that, we're, we're, we're now behind the eight ball straight away. We're, we're all trying to play catch up. So now we're trying to, um, run now we've got deficient hormone pathways so you don't feel great you don't this you start making bad decisions it's all of this is solved by just having a complete natural lifestyle again you sleep kind of on a grounded way you ha- you're not getting bathed in in non-native electromagnetic frequencies which are having massive impact on our health they're they're negating um, melatonin synthesis turns out that on the cell there's a voltage gated calcium channel that runs on frequency with all this wi-fi and stuff that's getting jammed on we're getting too much calcium running into the cells that's that's reacting with too much nitric oxide it's causing peroxynitrate causing all this free radical damage right. damaging dna you can see how this is unfurling it's getting awfully complicated now but it's shouldn't if we just switched the power off at night and didn't get bathed in this for year after year after year so this is the quest for me this is it's not about food anymore it's about how do we as a culture take ourselves out because we're being we're being farmed as a commodity we're not we don't mean anything to the government we don't mean anything to the multinationals the corporations we're we're just a a unit that must spend money and we need to like wake up and think wow we need to get ourselves out of this mm. back into a community where we're actually getting exposed to sunlight we're yeah. eating food that's grown seasonally and we can then just you're going to feel amazing because we've all been camping and done it and you start to wake up oh but then it's day five you're about to work Back to reality. Back to, yeah. Which reality? So, yeah, it's complex. It is. I mean, we've got it good in Perth, the amount of space we've got available. In in the West, we're privileged. We're very lucky. But, I mean, some cities in the world, like Tokyo and so on, the the, the epidemics that are happening of depression and suicide. And And that's nothing yet. Yeah. That's nothing yet. We we are only years away from the Internet of Things, Mm -hmm. only years away. For that to happen, we must beam down – shortwave, high frequency shortwave mm-hmm. microwaves, you know. Um, it used to be tower to tower. It was going to be, mm-hmm. it was looked like it was going to be every 15 minutes had to have a, a like a tower, you know, like a, a receptor, mm-hmm. receiver box. Now uh, it looks like they're changing that and they're going to put satellites up and beam it down over. And and we need to wake up before that mm-hmm. because that's that's intense for those that follow quantum biology, which it's is incredible. no one. <laughs> yeah. See, it's mind-blowing how quick – that has all happened. Uh, phenomenal, phenomenal, and that—that's the jungle we live in now. Yeah. This, this is a, a, a digital quantum um, jungle we're living in now. Yeah. You know, and you know, most people aren't following um, the futurists and the, and, the, and, the, and the amazing thinkers that are actually doing the thought experiment where this ends. And um, it's it's pretty full on. It's interesting. Does it change anything on a spiritual level? No, because they're all, the metaphors are still the same. The challenges are still the same. Mm. The need to wake up and connect is still the same. It's just that we're not in a jungle with jaguars and leopards anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. the game is still there and we still carry the same tools. Like you said, where's the fun? Where's the love? Mm. Where's the connection? Um, because the last thing you want to do is get scared by all of this and freaked out or angry. A lot of people get angry by it. Mm. And then they want to join a group where other people are angry. It's like, whoa, right. you don't want to do that. You don't want to join a troop of angry people because the synergy of that is just going to deplete your heart and you're going to end up shriveled. <laughs> and it further uh, accentuates the divide, the polarity mm. Mm. from left to right. It seems more of us need to meet with this integral conversation, see the bigger picture, stop fucking hating yeah. people that aren't doing it our way yeah. and start to have proper conversations. So, so where does the solution begin? It begins with 
us as individuals finding out what we love, mm-hmm. you know, and that that's where the journey begins with everyone. What do you love? What do you mean by that? What do you, when you think about it, when you do it, your energy lifts, mm-hmm. you feel light, the frontal lobe drops off, you go into a flow state mm-hmm. where time disappears. Mm-hmm. When I do jujitsu, man, that hour goes and it's like, oh my God, I, it's what happened with that, you know, and, and we need to find these things in our life and, and saturate our day with it. So you're resonating positivity because for me, when I do a health assessment on people, one of the first, okay, I look in their eyes straight away. I want to see how much light's coming mm. out of their eyes because that's, that's the overall, you know, have a look at the light in their eye. Uh, and then I want to know how much positivity is coming out in their speech and their tone and their mm. mannerisms. These, these are the most important things. It's not about superficial stuff. You've got to be positive. Yeah. Which I don't know if I've been positive. <laughs> I don't think I've been a bit negative on the on the chit chat show today. But no, I think you uh, have. You know, it's a great conversation. We're, we're going to bring it back to positivity. Yeah. <laughs> water. What's your current views of water? Water is uh, life. Yeah. Water. Water should be your main beverage. If you drink nothing else but water, good for you. Source water. Filter your water. Fluoride is ridiculous. Yeah. You know, you don't have to go down the, the conspiracy theory of it. You don't even have to research. Just you don't want fluoride in your water. So you filter it out. Even this conversation can get people really angry. Like, why are you wasting your time on this topic? Uh, there's bigger issues in the world to worry about, which is true. But yeah. we're essentially water. We're mainly not, water. Not water. You, you, okay, let's forget about the 70% water. We're yeah. molecular wise, water molecules, molecular, we're 99%, 99% water. Right. Water. And, and it's like, once again, this is why I urge people to look, look at the quantum biology. Mm. Just, just have a look at Dr. Jack Cruz, mm. K R U S E. You start to study what's going on with the energetics of the body, how it works. Water is everything on a mm. quantum dynamic because all that energy comes from the mitochondria and things like that. And what the mitochondria is, is electrons. It's not even physical. Forget food. Mm. It's, it's electrons are shuttled from, from, um, one protein to the next, the next, and then it makes this polarity thing spin on the end. And that generates, um, electricity and electromagnetism and things like this, but it's all dependent on water. Mm. And, um, we need to stay hydrated, uh, I'm not going to go into it, but like it's hydration is number go one. Go into it. It's, it's, um, <laughs> you can't, you, you can't store energy in the body. It's a battery. The cells are batteries. And then you like run your car battery low on water, see what happens. Mm. Just nothing happens. The first sign of energy depletion in the body is normally dehydration. And you can be drinking a lot of water and still dehydrated right. because now it comes, water follows minerals, you know, so you need to be mineralized and things like this. But, um, it's it's water is is more than just something we're drinking. It's a metaphor, and it's one of the five elements. And I follow my my science now as I follow the five elements a lot. You know, wood to fire mm-hmm. to earth to metal water yeah. back to wood. This this Chinese Taoist thing I like it. Um, but the water is one of those power elements in Taoism. It's the most powerful water. So it's not just about drinking it. It's about understanding ourselves as water. So what do I mean by that? Well, look, let's let's play temperature on water. So now go into cold oceans, see what happens. And 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 and, and in heat and things like this because water um determines temperature as well. So if you're getting too hot, getting too cold, uh, it's water elements, but it's it's all about um shrinking these respiratory proteins in the mitochondria to get f- more uh, electron transport mm. buzzing around to get this, this because we're electromagnetic. And we know that intuitively because when you're around someone you really like, there's a magnetism. They're up, their their chi, their shen is flowing, it's in flow, and there's a charge that's held. And that is, that's where health begins, man. You, you, you're around someone like that and it's like, man, I, I don't really care about the superficial things around them, what they're doing, but how have they got that charge, that charisma, that yeah. magnetism? You know, why do their words stick? Why, mm. What's going on? And um, on a physical level, man, <laughs> you'll track that down to hydration. Yeah. You know, so, um, get, and water and things like that. So, yeah, I, water for me is, is a huge thing. Mm. You, we got to keep drinking water, keep drinking it, and uh, make sure we're mineralized. Don't over drink it, of course. But you got to get into it as well. Have cold showers. Have get yeah. into the ocean. Immerse yourself into it. It's a Faraday cage, man. If you want to get away from the EMFs, get into the ocean. Mm-hmm. Untouchable. Yeah, so, then you've got people. Um, 
saying now nah, the ocean isn't the way as well. Now that's over polluted. I mean, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it probably is. Got to uh, um, go up into the Rocky Mountains or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, get a waterfall maybe. I, don't know. I think anything now could be taken too literally mm. and have a excessive uh, rant be put on. <laughs> uh, and and, then that, and that's the thing. And that's why me as a holistic practitioner, I, my philosophy is always based around holism. So if we're pinpointing one thing, we've gone the wrong way right. straight away. We can't, we can't even express the truth of, mm. of health. You yeah. can't because as soon as you choosing words, you're, you're, you're talking about one mm. thing, even the concept of holism. You can't, it's, if, if it can be, Depicted mm. in words, it's not really yeah. the essence of it. And so we need to understand that these are all of these things are in context and then they must be flowing because they're changing in. Water doesn't stay water. Mm. So it changes in other stuff and, yeah. and everything's like that. So even though we've got all these aspects of a healthy lifestyle, there must be multiples of them that must be in flow. Mm. But when you do that, you realize, oh, there's core principles that are real, connection, positivity, joy, laughter, sleep, fasting, whole foods. There's core principles that will always be there 50 years from now, yeah. you know, and um, that's what we have to focus on for real health. And then people will try and spin these core principles in a way that they can try and own mm. and they'll call this diet, that diet, this or that. Um, because there's a commodity in it, you know, there's an economy. If you can like uh, repackage ancient information as your own, right. people think, oh, he knows something that no one else knows. No, nah, he's rebranded it. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? It's rebranding. Yeah. Um, the core principles are the core principles. Mm. And uh, distraction is distraction. Right. So let's just bring it back, mm. you know. One of the healthiest people I've ever met was a teacher in India. He's passed now, but he, he died at 104 or 105. Uh, Yogananda, not Paramahansa Yogananda, different Yogananda. And, uh, oh, I was going to say, you met him. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And um, his diet, he swore for decades, was just orange juice and honey in water. Just that. Healthiest, most vibrant. Talk about light coming out of one's eyes, I mean, and strength. Chi, he was beaming, full of joy, full of energy, yet this diet totally defied everything I thought was healthy. Sugar galore, just mm. sugar. <laughs> and it does, if we think reductionistically, if we think mechanistically, mm -hmm. uh, in the, like we do in the West, yeah. it's like, that's rubbish, yeah. he's a scam artist. No, not me. I think, yeah, that is possible. I guarantee he was getting sunlight. I yeah. guarantee he was spending a lot of time expose the sun because that's a game changer mm -hmm. with our high sugar diets and things like that because food is only counting for one third of this electron transport mm -hmm. the rest is just breathing oxygen and sun exposure mm -hmm. so like that is possible and, and i don't doubt him i mean you would have met him so you mm -hmm. can tell uh, like a fake you know is he would have been getting a lot of solar exposure mm -hmm. and then that changes things because w what are we looking at the science coming through now um a lot of insulin resistance is coming from lack of sun exposure mm -hmm. Yeah. Because um, the the skin is is another eye. It works um, the the melanopsin receptors mm -hmm. uh, in the back of the retina. They're all through the skin as well. Mm -hmm. So the skin is another eyeball picking up the sun, and that has impact on our insulin metabolism. Mm -hmm. So like he would have had uh, if he was getting a lot of sun exposure, a lot of exposure to the elements, and breathing properly and everything else, he would have been metabolizing those sugars because even protein so there's no protein well hang on a minute the air we're breathing is all nitrogen mm. so that's the backbone of our proteins and then i just know as a gut feeling that our microbes are piecing together this with that that mm. are making all the essential amino acids yeah. if other variables are at play yeah so yeah it's possible man yeah these yogis i mean some of the stories and the the, the evidence uh, suggesting or making it obvious the radical things some of these yogis have done like breatharians and so forth maybe yeah they've tapped into this ability to to live almost like a plant connecting with their roots connecting with the earth yes. gaining energy from the sunlight a hundred percent like a plant the only mm -hmm. difference with us now is we've uprooted and we carry the ocean in us. We carry right. the water supply in us, in mm. the skin. We don't need the root system tapped in, yeah. but we're still photosynthesizing. Mm -hmm. And that, that was the big thing that came out in the sciences a few years ago that, well, wow, if you've got enough chlorophyll running around in your mm. blood, you actually photosynthesize that. You, you, you swatch it, one, you, you, you switch it um, one more step. And that, that was a 
that was one of the best days of my life when I read that yeah. stuff, man, because I always knew it that like where we are photosynthesizing as yeah. well. And so we are that plan, man. Right. So Just got to get our feet get, on again, the earth. Everyone's yeah. going to go, oh, no, but I burn, I burn, I burn. You've got to get that solar callus back up again. It's The reason we're burning from the sun mm. is not because the sun's a killer. It's because we live indoors all the time yeah. now. We've got no melanin left. We, you just get enough exposure to get the you know mm. a little warm. Shut it down. Mm. Repeat. Shut it down. It might take a year yeah. to start to build up, build up. But um, sensible parts, you know, slowly, slowly. You don't ever burn yourself. Mm-hmm. But to, to suggest that we never want exposure and we've got to slip, slop, slap and coat ourselves in sunscreen every time right. we go outside. Right. So now we need to ask the question. So you think zero vitamin D mm. is safer than the potential of just being stupid and getting overly burnt, right. you know, because we know vitamin D takes out or protects you from more cancers mm. than anything else that we can do. It's really so, cool in Hawaii now. There's a there's a big campaign, mainstream campaign, in all the touristy parts of Hawaii, literally banning certain sunscreens, like wow. the mainstream sunscreen, because they're showing very hard evidence that it's participating in the killing of the reefs. Ooh. And I mean, in some of those busy beaches like Waikiki and so on, it's like an oil spill. Wow! You see people spraying on those spray sunscreens and then going straight in the water. It's just people are swimming in this, this chemical pool and um it's killing the reefs other shit is killing the reefs as well of course but they've got this very um strong campaign and most of the 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 boats that take people out on snorkel trips and most of the touristy beaches are really pushing it hard i don't know if they're banning these sunscreens but they're making it very um very strong to uh to use the natural sunscreens which is exciting i think yeah Totally. Yeah. I mean, what you feed your skin is going into your body. Man, it's which a sponge. Yeah. Straight in. Yeah. Straight in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's why, like, I mean, it's absorption. That's why putting aluminium things straight into your lymph glands here, right. you know, it's silly. Oh, it's I mean, and then, then they'll go to the so that same person will go to the pharmacist and get their, um, their hormone creams to rub in the skin, ah. and get, you know, because it's great absorption. What about yeah. the uh, the deodorant that literally stops you from sweating? Yeah, yeah, crazy. Just, like, plugs it up, and then you see it coming out like these big like uh, inflammation things. Coming yeah, out. it's got to come out of somewhere. It's just unnatural. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I mean, if you smell really bad, then <laughs> you got to look at that, and you're sweating out your suits. And- yeah, <laughs> you got to. You're not detoxing properly, right? You got to look at that. Right. You know. You shouldn't, you shouldn't. And then it's just the wrong bacteria living under the armpits mm-hmm. and things like that. It's so, um, the, these are good signs and symptoms of deeper internal mm-hmm. disharmony. So you don't yeah. want to suppress that. Yeah. You want to, I mean, don't get me wrong. You don't want to have no hygiene and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But I mean, <laughs> God, I just use essential oils and stuff like that. Yeah. I, I don't have a problem. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you, you got to be very careful about what you put on your skin. Mm-hmm. I mean, the toxicity thing is huge, and we our culture nowadays is just full of so many toxins, and they're building up. And this is another reason why we have got the first generation of kids that are going to crumble yeah. because now they're it's epigenetically and genetically these toxins have been passed on generation after generation now, and the experiment's been done. Uh, and the only people that aren't admitting it that it was a huge failure, the ones making money out of it still. And they're the ones that can afford TV commercials and they right. can lobby government groups and things. And mm. But um, we're seeing it now. There's damage to these kids, you know. So the detoxification is a way of life now. We have to mm. – and that's why, you know, saunas or, or sweating is the best way. We can mm. sweat a lot of the stuff out. Yeah. If you got water, <laughs> don't get <Right>. dehydrated. <laughs> yeah. you know, just just water, and that's the big. There's the big thing in toxicity is the dilution principle. You know, if you dilute any toxin enough, mm. then it, it's the harm factor drops away significantly. Right. So um, stay hydrated and keep a little fiber in your system and mm. keep sweating is the key. Yeah. Mm. How's your kombucha going? Gypsy mm. elixirs. I haven't talked about that. Having a um, resurgence where um, we're going to. We're bringing out new flavors soon. Oh, cool. Yeah. They yeah. are the best kombuchas. Thanks, I mean, we've had them in Hawaii and LA. There's yeah. a lot of kombuchas, as you know, but that has the most powerful herbs well, in it. And yeah, a incredible. lot of herbs. Yeah. Um, which 80% of the, the costing of all that is is in the herbs that we, we brew down mm. properly. So it takes us a long time to make it as well. But um, it's also uh, – 
rare to do it the way we do it nowadays, it- which is the way we all do it. If you, you make it here, everyone makes it the same way, but mm. because you can't control it, it's a live food and the fermentation goes on mm. and it depends on where you measure it, depends on where it's at. Um, the industry hates that. It's got to be regulated. So they're regulated. forcing a lot of the bigger groups into, um, stopping the process by you can gas it you just, you just mm. pressure gas it and stops the process and a lot of people are using um cultures start a culture not doing the old scoby method mm. and all this type of thing what's the other um, way um, you can you can use a uh, um um a kombucha culture mm. like, uh, and so you're not using the big scoby and the, the old fashioned right. where we take a starter and do it like that and um and then when they get it at the perfect point they um they pressure carbonate it, ah. and that sort of makes it uh, stop processing. It's still right. alive, but it's yeah. not. I don't really understand it. Mm. So I've, I've only ever done it the old traditional way that okay. we've done it, and um, and that's the only way we'd ever do it. Yeah. If, if we had to change, then we'd stop, right? Because um, it's just not the way we we roll, you know. But um, yeah, we bring out some new flavors. We got one um, uh, that's. Uh, we're going to release pretty soon, which is the um, Rosemary Got a Cola. Oh, cool. Yeah, so we're calling that one the Rosemary Cola. That's, mm. that's a really nice one. Is it going to be like a cola? It's because um, it's the Got a Cola, yeah. you know, yeah. um, and the Rosemary, um, it's it's just the perfect playoff mm. with it. And it it tastes maybe like it's a stretch of cherry cola type okay. of taste yeah, maybe. Yeah. But, Beautiful. Um, but, yeah, they, they're doing really great. Um, it's a good process and, uh, yeah, we're pretty happy with those. So. And do you have any upcoming workshops or anything like that? Yeah, I do. I've got, um, we've got two coming up, not this Saturday, next Saturday. One is, um, healthy eating on a budget. Cool. That's been, that's great. People have been requesting that. Mm. Um, so we're going to put that one together and just show people how, you know, some ideas of how, because it's true, you know, it's, yeah. it's not, it, food's expensive in WA. So it's, it's not. It's, uh, it's not cheap here. And um, the other one is doing with my good friend Aurora and we're doing a uh, healthy dessert. So, you know, right. <laughs> we're doing um, healthier desserts, all sugar-free, dairy-free, blah, 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 gluten-free, but with, um, you know, AFA, mm-hmm. with the medicinal mushrooms, with, you know, we're adding all the, mm-hmm. the bling and the jing, you Wonderful. know, and, and, and showing people how to do that. So making um, – you know, healthy desserts with um, whole food compounds. In Great. It, you know, like especially the mushrooms. I'm, I'm mad about the mushrooms at the moment. I just mm-hmm. love that super feast. You know, Mason. Yeah. He, he's sourcing wildcraft stuff, amazing, from China. And and the, the reishi and the chaga. I mean, chaga is the highest antioxidant of all foods and is herbs. It? Number one. Mm. And, um, and, it's, and it's just the perfect thing to add to your, your hot chocolate or your coffee or whatever. It's so easy. It's mm. not destroyed by heat. And you've got the most potent antioxidant there. So we're putting things like chaga in chocolate sauce right. and things like that. And cool. Apart from that, um, next next lecture is on water. Right. <laughs> Funny enough, yeah. Which um, is a topic I can't wait to get into because mm. we'll talk a little bit about the the quantum dynamics of it, the obviously the physical stuff, mm. but um, just just the, the, the metaphorical element of what water is. It's fascinating man our existence is dependent on it and um it's a beautiful topic so i look forward to that next lecture awesome when is that do you know that will be released soon but it'll be about a month from now okay. but on our website um the rawkitchen.com.au you go there we've got our uh, part of the there's a events and lectures mm-hmm. coming up. So, yeah. and um, people, best thing to do is just get on there, push for the newsletter, mm-hmm. which we only ever send out when we got a new workshop on this. Yeah. And then you stay informed. And does the kombucha have a site as well, or is that on the Royal Kitchen? That's on the Royal Kitchen. Yeah. Gypsy yeah. Elixirs. Great. You're doing good work, Heath. You're, You're doing, doing great good work, work, brother. Your yeah. book's amazing. Thank you. Um, it's an honor to be uh, the first on the podcast, which is going to be epic. You've got an amazing studio here. So, yeah. 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 It feels good to have these, uh, once again, integral conversations all come together with, with wisdom and insight and, uh, yeah, keep pulling it apart and get to the, get to the truth of it all, get to uh, the yeah. deeper wisdom of, of it all. So I really bow to you, man your knowledge, your wisdom, and then you're just your humility to uh, listen to it all. It's mm. really honorable, really beautiful. Thanks, man. We do it together. You know, like yeah. a, um, 
I appreciate those words and I, and I write back at you, you know, mm-hmm. like together we're a crew, you know, and that's mm-hmm. the way I feel. So, yeah. um, and sharing is the best thing, man. Totally. Like, um, we're stopping now because we know it's time to stop, but I just know we could go could days going. in a row. We'll do it again. You know? We'll do it again for sure. Um, but it's, uh, it, it's leaving on the one note, you know, together we win, you know, yeah. to all of us. Good note to leave on. Much Thanks, love. Man, I appreciate it. Much Thanks, love Jim. everyone. Bye.